Good day, folks. This is the Hawker Sea Fury FB11 export uh, version unboxing. The airplane is from Airfix, and um, it is the export version. So Airfix has already produced an, a Hawker Sea uh, Fury uh, model before. Now this is the export one, so it's been delivered to Australia, Canada, and uh, the Netherlands. So I've got three paint schemes here. You can hear my dog walking around in the background. So three paint, paint screens, um, schemes. First one, Australian Navy. Uh, the second one is the Canadian Navy. And the third one is the Dutch Air Force. The, the cover photo or cover image is depicting the Australian version and is the airplane which has uh, taken out an unmanned aircraft back then in 1955 uh, above the coast of New South Wales. I'm gonna build this model for a diorama not necessarily with this number um, I'm making a um, diorama for a model contest about the Korean War Australia has participated in the Korean War. We had a uh, aircraft carrier there, uh, the HMAS Sydney, and it had various aircraft stationed on it. Um, on her, among others, was this Hawker Sea Fury. Now the box. So couple of warnings very important as you see as you know these days um, small image so that's the price in Australian dollars that was in late 2019 for some reason they depict the colors and the paint schemes upside down so as you know Airfix recommends humbrol colors and these are the numbers interestingly they don't list then the colors themselves they just bring up the bring up the the numbers which is a bit of a pain um because i use tamiya and testor's colors and uh but i mean you can obviously find the equivalent to humbro or using common sense when you have to paint something in aluminium you just grab the aluminium but with other paints um it might be a bit difficult or uh, complicated okay so let's open the box to be honest with you i've opened the box before and uh, sorry i just have to put my dog away that she doesn't she's not in the way um nevertheless it's still is the unboxing so there's the cockpit uh, cover nothing really nothing really uh, difficult on it which I'm really happy about it because I recently built a couple of Second World War aircraft cockpits and they're a bit of a pain to deal with some line lights at the wing tips as well okay let's have a look see at the sprue actually apologies before the sprue let's have a look at the decals so we've got the common decals here at the top very very detailed it's gonna be a bit of a pain but that's all right then we've got the australian navy decals here um then the canadian one and then the decals for the Netherlands version, for the Dutch version. Okay. There's um, there are instructions for the placement of the common decals or stencil, which is pretty good, pretty useful. And then. This is the instruction manual. First, we review the sprue. 
and then we get to the instruction manual. Okay. So, these are the wings, and you will know that, I'm not sure whether the non-export version has it this way, but the export version, specifically because two of these are for the Navy, they can be built with uh, folded wings. So the wings have been broken up into parts. So you can do the folded wings here. All right, so that's my dog. She doesn't like people around. Okay. The sprue is pretty good. There's not much, uh, there's not much to be, um, you know, trimmed on it or um, sanded or whatnot. It's pretty good mold. So that's the fuselage. Some part of the engine. It's not the whole engine, unfortunately, but um, but that's okay. I guess there are some third party parts where you can do the engine, but I'm not intending to do the engine on this diorama. I'm just gonna build some part of the aircraft carrier, HMAS Sydney, and this will be on the, probably on the lower deck uh, with the wings folded up. As every Airfix model, I believe, or at least those which I had to deal with, it has this um, frame which is um, ensuring that the fuselage and the wing connect in the proper way. Airfix is uh, putting a lot of um, uh, a lot of attention a focus on doing that right it's it's pretty interesting i haven't seen that with other um, brands other models okay so that's the fuel tanks um, the wheels and parts of the wheels and the uh, wheel compartment so that will be visible parts of the cockpit not sure how visible it is, but it's okay detailed. I can work with that. I don't have any PE parts for this, but I'm okay with that as well. Very nicely detailed wheels. I don't want to go overboard with the PE parts. Um, I'm not good at them anyway, uh, with them at the moment. I haven't done too many models with P parts. So that's the propeller. And these are the parts which I will use to fold up the wings. Propeller tip and some bombs, as you would need with a military aircraft. So these are the rockets and some parts of the cockpit again, like the seat. and some parts of the wheels. And that's for the cockpit, I believe. Yeah, some wiring. Okay, so now let's grab the instructions. Uh, I find it pretty, pretty good uh, compared to old instructions from 30 years ago. Um, I've recently built a couple of models from that period, just to rebuild models which I built when I was a child or a kid. So out of, um, out of uh, nostalgia. But let's get back to this one here. So it's a color coded uh, um, as you have it from Airfix. So once a part is in place and the next image is depicted red um, and so on and so on. Um, the circled ones are, I believe, the parts from the frames, the non-circled numbers are the colors and the ones with the square frame are the ones, are the decals. 
Okay. So as you see, it's pretty good detailed uh, cockpit. I kind of like it. I have no issues not using uh, PE parts here. Uh, so that's the wheel compartment and that frame yeah here which helps to align the wings properly so that when you build it it's sort of not tilted so when the airplane sits on the ground the wing tips have the same distance from the ground it's actually quite a important thing to get it right especially if you want to submit your aircraft for a contest which I'm doing okay so that's the engine uh, some parts of the engine not the whole lot um, then we move on to the wings and here is uh, you have to follow these instructions if you want to build uh, the wings with a with a, with a straight uh, position again some frames to build in to get them right so that they don't you know tilt up a bit or whatnot and this is the version where you build the wings with a folded position so that's what I'm gonna do I know for a fact that you can buy some PE parts for it. Again, I don't have the time to order them and uh, get bothered with them because the diorama is for Anzac Day um, and uh, we don't have much until Anzac Day. I've got about six weeks and I'm gonna build this model um, and a couple of more to make a, a battle scene as well. So um, on this page you get the instruction how to how to build or close up the wheel compartments if you want to hang up the aircraft and make it look like it's flying and this is how you build the wheels when the aircraft is on the ground okay so we keep going same thing wheels and wheels so you can see whether in a enlarged image whether you um, put the pieces together correctly so that's how it needs to look like okay that's an interesting thing by the way with the wheel so you can find some manufacturers um, do the wheels in two parts some of them do it in one part I generally prefer the one part because when you glue the two halves, halves of the wheels together it's kind of hard to get it right so there's no glue coming out or there's no um, gap staying which you then have to fill up so anyway see how we go see how we go okay here here's the propeller and how you put that in interesting that um, every aircraft model uh, presents the propeller in a you know position that you can actually rotate it <laughs> which is interesting because um, I mean why would you rotate it mind you I like it I like it in that in that uh, status that you can rotate the you can rotate the propeller if you want it like for instance you can't you can't rotate the wheels right it even has this uh, part flattened where you and you put it down on the ground and it stands on the ground and um, obviously it's flattened so anyway the fuel tanks bomb and the rockets uh, here's the full ordnance and the cockpit and some lights you can um, 
you can do some parsing um, in uh, various positions depending how you like it or what you want to depict I'm not sure what this part is but well anyway let's see okay about the colors so this is the Australian paint scheme I will get back to this this is the Canadian paint scheme and that is the Dutch paint scheme actually all of them are uh, based on aircraft carriers I didn't know the Dutch had aircraft carrier all right interesting beautiful beautiful uh, paint scheme I would do this if it wasn't for the diorama okay so this is the Australian Navy scheme and um, so with the colors as I said I've got some aluminium ones and uh, Got some other metallic colors which I might or might not use but I've got them ready metallic gray chrome silver um, we've got silver two types of silver from model master or testers then I've got the blacks gloss black and flat black then the grays I mean with the grays, the thing will be that I will have to do some sort of um, experiment because it's not always easy to uh, convert the and one manufacturer's colors to another uh, manufacturer's colors. So I will have to play around with it. I've got some uh, grays available from testors and. Um, yeah, gunmetal, light grey. You use gunmetal on every single airplane, don't you? It has some yellow, not too much. So I've got some yellow from uh, testers. Um, again, I will experiment with them. It has some red. So again, experimenting. This is international orange and then transparent red and insignia red. Then the olive drab. I have to see which one is the good olive drab for this one. Some pale green. I will probably build it with a pilot if I can get my hands on a good pilot. All right, so that's steel again, a metallic colors, and we've got some skin tans here, uh, leather for um, for belts and so on. So skin tones and whatnot, rust color as you get that on. Uh, an airplane based on an aircraft carrier and again gunship gray well this is US Navy blue gray so probably not this is ocean gray we'll see again some other grays and flat white and some blues if it's necessary all right, well, thanks for your attention. Have a nice day.